How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night. It is the Earth Master out here about 7.21 p.m. That's California time. April 24th, 2025 is the date. Hope everyone's having a good day out there. Well, a good evening, that is. Latest activity shows a 2.5 earthquake and a uh, looks like a 1.9 up into the Alaska area. 2.5 down into the South America region there. Quite a bit of a trailing of earthquakes here across the Middle America Trench, working its way up into the Gulf of California. Now, there's a, a little bit of uptick here across the southern portion of the state, mainly smaller microquake activity. Uh, so far today, a 2.5 there outside of Furnace Creek near uh, Death Valley, and also a 2.6 a little bit further south here of the border. Uh, watch for some further activity out here. Things are uh, definitely starting to light up out here on the earthquake multitude counts. Also, one earthquake here just shy of the park build section. Uh, also, some further movement up north there uh, the, uh, around the creeping section, very close to where the park field segment comes into play as well. Now, this area of the San Andreas Fault is coming up on a regular time interval here where, uh, well, we should be uh, having at least... A 6.0 earthquake. Now the Parkfield earthquake region, it's uh, it's a name given to various large earthquakes that occur in the vicinity of the town of Parkfield. I was just down there a couple years ago looking at the uh, the way the uh, the fault system moves down there. Uh, anyway, uh, magnitude 6.0 or larger have occurred on this fault system with regular interv intervals between 12 and 32 years apart. Now we're at the higher end of this. Uh, right, last earthquake was back in 2004, September 28th, of a magnitude 6.0. The average number of years runs about 22 years here. Uh, so if you think about it, we're sitting right at 21 years. We could see uh, an earthquake on this Parkfield section of the San Andreas Fault at any uh, given time here. Let's go back here to this region. Uh, where are we at? Not that one. There we go. Uh, also, another concern here is that um, a six-pointer on the park field segment could potentially rupture the locked area that sits down south here. Let me show you guys. Here's the park field section uh, right about here. Now, this area down here, a little bit further south uh, around the San Bernardino uh, area is uh, fairly well locked. And the last big earthquake on this segment here, excluding the extreme southern end of the San Andreas Fault, which hasn't had any rupture there in over 300 years. Uh, but this last big one was back in the, uh, where am I at? I keep, <laughs> I keep clicking on these wrong ones. Uh, was back in 1857, right? And that was uh, believed to be a 7.9 earthquake, uh, a fairly decent sized earthquake there. And believe it or not, there was, an after or a foreshock that was centered at Parkfield that triggered, they believe it triggered that section of the San Andreas Fault there. So it's believed that this earthquake, uh, the big one in 1857, was preceded by a magnitude 6.0 foreshock that was centered at Parkfield. So it's possible, you know, that we could see um, a repeat pattern with the amount of time that has passed here on the San Andreas Fault. Um, along that locked area here and uh, of course that could result you know in, a, in quite a big earthquake and who's to say that it does not include this section down here this time you know the southern extreme southern branch of the San Andreas Fault uh, really no rupture in over 300 years so it's fairly well primed for some bigger movement watching this closely here because this next six pointer that occurs on the park field section of the San Andreas Fault could you know, create uh, a little unzipping pattern. And there's been some speculation that uh, the San Andreas Fault up here could potentially uh, rupture further north and trigger the uh, Cascadia subduction zone and vice versa. So it's uh, got a lot of potential out here. And we're looking at a time frame here. Like I said, 21 years coming up on that 22-year 22, 22 mark uh, where we, um, we could definitely see some some interesting earthquake movement here soon. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Been watching movement north along the creeping section and also south here recently. Uh, just a couple smaller quakes. In the last seven days, uh, let's see here. That is on the creeping section. 
Here is the park field section. Not a whole lot on it. Looks like one earthquake here just off of it there in the mountains at 1.0. Now there's also another way you can check and see maybe if we're coming up on on a, on a time frame where things could get interesting. This is a, uh, a station around Parkfield here, just north of Parkfield. That's along the San Andreas Fault there. This looks like it's on the North American side of the plate boundary. So 2004, look at that northward adjustment. It dropped significantly. Normally heading north as far as the, uh, the movement of the North American plate in relation to the Pacific plate, right? Well, that uh, released a whole bunch of energy in 2004. Here we are, 2022, and, uh, you know, add on those two more years here, 2024, 2025. And we're at, uh, we're just above the previous level seen on that uh, accumulation of northward track, so to speak. So this is just one seismograph station in the area, or uh, one GPS station in the area that shows, you know, kind of what happened there in 2004. And, um, you know, I think we're getting close here to see some uh, interesting movement out here. So we'll continue to keep an eye there on California. Got, um, you know, a lot of earthquake activity ramping up out here. A lot of smaller quakes, but still they're earthquake activity, right? Uh, up here in Northern California, 4.2 from yesterday, a little 2.2 uh, so far today. Nothing, well, we got one earthquake up there along the Cascadia. Very shallow earthquake, in fact. Uh, 1.9 from early this morning. Uh, I do want to double check the trimmer map here this evening. See what we have for Cascadia trimmer. And that uh, shows about 80 epicenters of trimmer here underneath the Oregon region. Not a big deal. Just uh, got, uh, you know, just a tad bit here. If we look at the last series here of trimmer events, if you look here on this chart, the elevated numbers here on the chart indicate a massive amount of trimmer right on each given time period here but lately you know ever since about the end of 2022 or so uh trimmer in this area has been seems like it's declining a little bit cascadia trimmer what that means i don't know if it's a good sign or bad sign i know recently though whenever there's elevated trimmer up here across the uh, vancouver and then seattle area tends to trigger earthquakes upstream up around the surface area so even you know it's possible that we may even be getting close to seeing uh, a big rupture out here across the cascadia it's just it's a possibility it's not fear mongering that is just the facts and we have to be prepared for that uh, so we'll continue to watch this area up here uh, along the cascadia like i said one little uh, interesting earthquake there at the surface level uh, across the area of Montana, a little bit of movement outside Helena. Yellowstone National Park, one earthquake there, but I uh, want to verify that real quick, see if we got anything major going on there across the Yellowstone. It doesn't look like it here. Really not seeing a whole lot of anything out here. Pretty quiet conditions there. Outside interference, maybe some wind. I don't know if there's thunderstorms out there, but it uh, uh, looks like some, some outside interference there. Really nothing of any... Um, volcanic or earthquake related events. Texas oil fields out here still getting hit. One interesting earthquake up here in Col outside of Columbus, well east of Columbus, off 70. Uh, 3.1 striking out here. Now, I'm sure quite a few folks felt that earthquake. Uh, well, not a whole lot showing, but uh, that was a very shallow earthquake. And uh, for those that did, they, you know, probably within the epicenter of that. Uh, 3.1 it's just a little odd don't don't really see a whole lot of earthquake activity out there as far as it sitting uh, around the hazard zone it's actually outside the main the main areas but uh, i guess occasionally we do get some earthquakes out there last 30 days or so uh it looks like there was another one here two days ago 3.1 and then today that 3.1 so something's brewing underneath this area what do we got out there Somebody digging a tunnel underneath here or what? That's uh, down there about three miles, two to three miles underneath this area. Uh, I don't think there's any type of gas or oil fields out here. I'm not for sure what that is. Oh, those, those look like tanks there. So I'm not quite for sure. Maybe someone here watching the video can uh, clue, uh, clue us in here. That's familiar with that area. I'm not quite... Uh, for sure what's out there but uh two earthquakes there within the same you know a couple days of each other 3.1 that's a little rare to see uh, one lonesome earthquake down in the elgin south carolina area 
Uh, take a look here at the uh, world view. Some newer activity striking down here on the, uh, well, north of Antarctica, southeast Indian Ridge for 5.2. Also some movement up around the uh, Austra Australia, Alaska area. <laughs> Got some fours out there, a couple fours uh, stirring up around this area today. Uh, could be getting ready to move up there, it looks like, as far as uh, some interesting activity. Keep an eye on that uh, northern area of the Pacific Plate, a little 1.9 up there right now. Uh, South America, a handful of earthquakes. That's been quite active in this area of the Prue-Chile Trench recently. Still continuing there with earthquake activity. Uh, keep an eye on that. Maybe uh, stirring up something bigger here soon. Uh, looks like a little movement around the Santorini. Is that close to Santorini? Let me... Uh, the 2.5 that just popped up. Let's go over here and check out the uh, station view real quick. See what we got for earthquake activity. This, uh, what's this one? That's a 3.7 from a few days ago. Now the Santorini, Greece area sits right around here. They're still having some earthquake activity. About 300 events in the last seven days. Um, I'm not seeing anything too big. What's this one? 4.4 a few days ago. So it looks like the other earthquake activity is somewhere out away from the region. Maybe up north here. That's probably those aftershocks that are taking place from that. Uh, let's see. There's a five-pointer out there in the Turkey area. Outside of Turkey, it looks like. Uh, either way, let's see what we got here around the Italy area. Anything major going on across the... Uh, Volcanoes, not doesn't look like it. A couple of smaller earthquakes in the last week, but really uh, just a little pattern that comes and goes. Various volcanoes out there showing a couple of smaller earthquakes, but uh, nothing of any major activity for now. Uh, New Zealand, 3.6. It looks like along the Kermadec Trench, southern end. Uh, like I say, though, we need to watch California getting that swarm of movement heading up north. These are a couple new earthquakes there in the Gulf of California, so that is working its way northward. We'll watch for uh, maybe some uh, further activity out there overnight. Watch the park field section. Of course, this whole thing could go. Uh, space weather activity, pretty quiet. Low-grade sea flare. Almost getting down into the B flare category, so things are a little on the quiet side for now. I don't know how long it's going to stay that way. We do have a couple of different regions out on the eastern limb that, uh, well, they're not even all that impressive looking. Fairly weak magnetic structure within these sunspots. There may be a couple more behind that as well. Uh, but really, you know, there's I don't see anything here on the earth-facing side of the sun that uh, warrants any type of... Uh, you know, major solar flare threat. We'll see some C flare activity, maybe. I really uh, don't even think we'll see M flare activity. So we'll have to wait and see if it, uh, you know, picks up here in the coming days. See if we can see newer sunspots popping up. Uh, Aurora forecast, not a whole lot going on there across the board. Pretty quiet. Flare threat has dropped 1% or less. M flare about 40% chance. Severe weather continues through the evening. I've seen some massive hail out there. Uh, somebody was showing it about 5.2 inch diameter hail. They call that DVD size hail. And Texas, boy, does Texas know how to get it done. Uh, still remainder of the night. Looks like some tornado activity, wind, and some big time hail threats remain. A look at the uh, storm reports for today. Uh, I know it's seen a couple tornadoes out there as well. Let's take a look. 13 reports of some tornadoes stretching along that line of severe weather today. Big time hail, 67 reports at that. Um, this Again, this will continue through the evening, so just be on guard. But, uh, I honestly can't believe how big that hail was. 5.2 inches, that is just incredible. Um, some big time wind gusts out there as well. So just a heads up, um, that will continue through the evening. Looking at tomorrow's forecast here for, for um, Friday. Marginal risk. They may update this, you know, overnight. Might include a, a slight risk in here. We'll have to see. But uh, just general thunderstorm activity out there. Kind of looks like a dinosaur in a way. I don't know. So, some people make some weird patterns out of these uh, 
these outlines. But uh, main threat tomorrow looks to be hail. Nothing as uh, far as tornado or wind events out there for now. All right, uh, what else is there, folks? I think that's about it. I hope everyone has a good night. Looks like, uh, what is that going around the Philippines there? I see some wavy lines there. Almost looks like an earthquake nearby. Really not seeing anything. But, uh, you know, we'll just continue to watch everything out here. You know, the typical zones out here could easily see um, some further movement. Nankai Trough, Kuro Kamchatka Trench. One area that's been somewhat quiet is the uh, Izu Trench down to the Mariana Trench here. That's almost always under strain here um, due to the uh, Pacific Plate moving off in that northwestern direction. Kind of a uh, button up here against the Eurasia Plate. whole lot of dynamics here in this area. And, um, yeah, that's definitely going to watch that. Very highly dynamic area for big earthquakes. All right, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good evening, folks. We'll catch you guys out here in the morning sometime for the Friday morning update. Take care.